Welcome to The Future of Things, a podcast and web series powered by Blue Byte. I'm your host, Amanda Costco. Thanks so much for tuning in. Over the course of season one, we talked about the future of packaging, connected products, sustainability, blockchain, the metaverse, and more. In today's episode, we're going to revisit some of the themes from our first season, as well as look back at 2021 in general from a tech perspective, because as they say, the best way to predict the future is to look at the past. Today, I'm joined by our podcast production team, which you don't hear from every episode. We have Maria McGee, Blue Byte's social media manager and content creator, and Paul Knight, their head of innovation. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks, Amanda, for having us. So round robin style, let's talk about our favorite episode or moment of the Future of Things podcast. Yeah, listen, it's been quite a season. I've been so excited about all the episodes. It's hard to choose. I love the one shout out to Amir, the episode that I was on. But really my favorite part of season one here was the episode with Kathy Hackle on the future of the metaverse. I think really big topic in society right now. And to have her on and give her expertise was so you know, insightful. And there was this one quote in particular that she said around the metaverse is not something that replaces the physical world. It just adds digital interactivity to it. Yeah, you know, we're physical beings living in a physical world. And even if the metaverse comes, we're still physical. We will still need physical products. We will still need detergent. We will still need tires on our cars, <laughs> you know, <laughs> unless they're flying cars, then you need something different, but you still need to land. Them. <laughs> you still need to land them. But yeah, so I think it's, it's not about going into a fully virtualized, fully synthetic world that we never come out of because a real world is so horrible. I, I think that's the dystopic view of it. I see it more as kind of our world merging our physical and digital bringing a different layer of sorts into the real world. And I think that was just so enlightening for me because it seems like the default when people talk about the metaverse is virtual reality, where I don't think that has to be the case. And she perfectly described it. So shout out again to Kathy Hackle for joining us for that episode. Yeah. I really enjoyed speaking with Brittany Carbone from Tonic CBD. I think it's super cool to hear from a female grower in the CBD space and learn more about how Blue Bite is giving Tonic a cutting edge when it comes to communicating with their consumer. I was especially impressed that like each strain of CBD can have its own communication sort of platform attached to it. And so I think that level of granular specificity on a product level is super cool. Uh, Blue Bites technology is definitely a great, a great way that we allow people to have that interaction with the product when it's on the shelf, you know, to be able to, you know, cue, cue the customer to just simply tap their phone to the product to learn more about our processes is definitely huge because definitely can't fit all of that on a product label, right? So being able to kind of extend our story past the label is still, you know, during that in-store experience isn't only valuable for our customers, but it's also valuable for the people working in that retail location. Because the reality of it is, you know, as much as we would love to think that selling tonic was the employee's top priority, it's their top priority is just selling product, right? It's just making sales that are going to, it's going to move units in their store. And by being able to leverage that technology, leverage that information right there, they don't have to worry about maybe memorizing a script when it comes to each brand, right? Like they, they can have that kind of added value experience of, not only showing the customer, hey, your lab reports, anything that you want is right here. You can learn more about the product, but kind of using that as like a, a cheat sheet, like, oh yeah, see, they have their own farm. They do all this, like this product is great for that. So it's really this like added experience that can deliver value on so many levels. One theme for me was definitely how digital technology is bringing products to life and transforming the consumer experience as well as competition. And as you said, Paul, I think it was really clear when we heard from Amir of Avery Denison. Maria, what about you? So safety, security, and transparency are very important to us at Blue Bite. I also really enjoyed the episode with Tonic CBD where we sort of discussed how Blue Bite is helping keep consumers safe with product-specific lab reports attached to their packaging. I also really enjoyed the conversation we had with Ice Bottle about their pledge against disposable water bottles and how Blue Bite is helping them tell their story and get consumers involved in their sustainability efforts directly through their products. We're living in an age now where virtually every adult has a smartphone. Uh, our big idea was to make our physical product digital uh, for a number of reasons. Firstly, to build a community of like-minded people 
with whom we could communicate via our products. In doing this, uh, building loyalty and sharing information about the things that they care about, the environment, the issues to do with the environment, news, health and wellness, and other information, all by simply tapping their smartphone on the bottom of their button. Yeah, absolutely, because you, you don't think about how products can actually inspire action, but they can, especially when you have a gamified component to it. Now, there were some projects that Blue Byte did in 2021 that we didn't get to, a chance to talk about on the show. Maybe we can spend a minute talking about those. Yeah, for sure. So as I just mentioned, sustainability is a huge thing. We also had the opportunity to work with a very talented fashion designer, Pablo Rose, for his spring collection during the Barcelona Fashion Week. Circularity and sustainability are really important to Pablo Rose, and he wanted to sort of build that into his work. So we helped him achieve this by enabling all of the items shown on the runway uh, with a blue-white experience that explained the provenance of each garment. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And Paul? Yeah, listen, it has been a whirlwind of a year, I think, for a lot of people. A lot of big things that we've done on the Blue Bite side, really going back all the way to January of the year, we launched a complete redesign of the Blue Bite platform. We really wanted to take all the knowledge that we've learned from the past 14 years of doing this and bake that into the most advanced version of our platform yet. And so users are telling us uh, that they notice the completely redesigned interface, its ease of use, the ability to organize content in more ways using projects and create their own URL structures when they're encoding NFC and QR codes. Additionally to that, it's been a huge year for Blue Byte as a company. We were acquired by a company, Mark Mamaj. Mark Mamaj is one of the leaders in industrial marking technologies, and they really saw the opportunity to bring immersive consumer experiences to their customers with the Blue Byte suite of tools. And so we've been working with them for a few months now and have already started to grow the value that we can deliver together. Absolutely. And so last but not least, I'd love to discuss 2021 in retrospect. I can't believe we're almost at the end of the year. When people talk about the technological changes that happened this year, when we look back on 2021, what are they gonna remember? I'll go first, and this is just something that happened recently. We just announced that we were making a fundamental change to our company. We're now looking at and reporting on our business as two different segments. One for our family of apps, and one for our work on future platforms. And as part of this, it is time for us to adopt a new company brand to encompass everything that we do. To reflect who we are and what we hope to build, I am proud to announce that starting today, our company is now Meta. So that's Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg announcing that his company will now be a metaverse company. This is something that we talked about before Mark Zuckerberg even made this announcement in our conversation with leading metaverse expert Kathy Hackle. But I really do think that 2021 is going to be looked back as the year that the metaverse sort of began, or at least that that word entered our cultural consciousness. Yeah, absolutely. So we've seen a lot of change and growth uh, in 2021 for digitalization of all kinds. Uh, at Blue Byte, we definitely saw the acceleration of QR code usage across industries. Um, a couple of years ago, if you ask someone how often they scan a QR code, they might have said it's not something they do regularly. But today, people are scanning QR codes very regularly since it's a fast, contactless, and sustainable way to get up to the minute information. Yeah, listen, yeah. it's so interesting how all of these things work together as well. We have the metaverse adding metadata to the physical world. We have these contactless technologies like QR, we have NFC. And then I think the third one here is really around decentralization and the blockchain. And so I really saw the explosion of NFTs in 2021 as really a breakthrough moment for blockchain where it became more practical than just a store or an exchange of wealth. There was a quote that I had read actually yesterday from Barron's that digital assets could constitute 10% of the addressable luxury market by 2030 with a total market value of $57 billion. I thought this was really uh, insightful because it spoke to the value that digital assets and content can create and provide. 
And by baking those into a source of truth of ownership with NFTs really unlocks so much value for this digital content and the digital lives that we're all living kind of in the physical and in this new metaverse world. So super excited for all these things kind of coalescing together to create the new future. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from a fashion perspective, I've seen so much happen from the digital fashion perspective that has really made people even question like, what is valuable when it comes to a fashion item? Is it the garment itself or is it the ownership? Is it the object? Is it the wearing it on social media? So there is really this like fidgetal experience that's happening where part of it is physical, part of it is digital. And those things need not be exclusive. It's like they work in a symbiotic way. And I imagine in the future, every product will have a digital life, whether it's your, <laughs> you know, your socks or your sweater. Any other concluding thoughts? It's been a run. Let's go 2022. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. The Future of Things is powered by Blue Byte. Blue Byte connects brands and consumers through products. For more information, check out bluebyte.com. For all past and future episodes of The Future of Things, subscribe to the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. That wraps up season one. We'll see you next year in season two. And until then, here's looking forward to the future.